Veris is a privacy protecting protocol. People can't see your past transactions or balance when you use Veris, unless you want them to. The Veris community believes in privacy for all as a basic human right. Veris, the next evolution in cryptocurrency and beyond. Discover more at Veris.io. Truth and privacy for all. Amazing. And it's so um, basically, I just want people to, you know, as we've been making this, um, I thought we'll have an update today. We still might have an update, like the actual release for Testnet, um, along with the main a mainnet upgrade. Uh, we still might have it today. I don't know. I think there's a really good chance because things have been looking very good and we've been running lots of chains and we've been sending things back and forth. And uh, and I wanted to have a chance to just discuss because I've been coding so much that I don't like I've said before, you know, I don't want to I don't want to hype, but it really exists and it's really working. And I'm now happy to talk about what's there because it it's all there. Everything that we've talked about, actually, there isn't some part, any important part of what we've talked about that is missing. And so we've got um, the complete system, including, you know, anyone who has an ID is going to be able to launch a chain. And... Uh, and define the notaries of that chain that verify that chain's correctness to Varus test chain in this case. And as long as they just run their daemon and they set notary ID equals and they're around the world and they're, you know, they'll verify the chain. And everyone on the chain can either just mine that one or merge mine up to 22 other chains pick a bunch of different chains they're going to merge mine, um, send, cur you don't have to be running the chain that you're sending to. So if you send from, say, Veris test to a PBAS chain, it will get there. You don't have to worry about it. And if you're sending on a PBAS chain and you're sending to Veris test, same thing. And if you're sending, like, if you just send from one chain to another, um, it will look for any converters that are available and it will route through those converters in order to convert the uh, fee currency automatically. And it'll convert the fee currency so that when it arrives on the other chain, the miners on the other chain earn in the other currency. And that doesn't matter whether the currency converter is on the source chain or the destination chain. So, for example, when the Ethereum bridge goes live, then it's going to be, you know, the currency converter on the Varus chain that converts the fees back and forth. But if you start your own PBAS chain, then the currency converter for your PBAS chain will be running on your PBAS chain. And, you know, you'll be able to make other basket currencies and et cetera, et cetera. Just amazing. It's, it's actually... If there is any other system in the world where you can actually go and issue a command to start up your blockchain that everybody in the world on the network can see that you're starting up a blockchain and actually start it running with a currency basket that is a converter of fees and the ability to send back and forth and convert your currency immediately to Varus or any other currency on the Varus ecosystem. I mean, actually, it doesn't have to be Varus. I'm saying if there is any other system like this in the world, please tell me, because I know of nothing even close. And, you know, as we've been doing this, and I'm sorry, I'm, I, I might sound like I'm hyping, but I'm actually just very excited. And as we've been doing this, um, you know, a number of things occurred to me of how people could... Uh, there are so many uses for this that go beyond the ones that even we're talking about. I just want to mention just like, you know, we, we talk about the fact that you're going to have this network where everybody sending in either direction for currency conversions gets the same price 
and it will end up being, you know, the 0.05% conversion fee. Just having a network like that that exists means that people will be using it because it's going to be the most fair. There's going to be arbitrage opportunities and the price. And when they use it, that's going to drive up yields, which are liquidity providers. This is my belief. Okay. But the point is that you can now make a blockchain with a command and you can define the notaries for your chain to be, for example, your corporate or, you know, industry group notaries. And you could make a PBAS chain that runs inside your company's firewall with nodes inside your company's firewall. And you could use it because it would have a converter between your own internal company um, currencies and the external public blockchain, you could use it to distribute actual money to your different departments. And you could use Veris ID to issue IDs to all your different departments and managers and everything and use multi-sig to actually just allow approvals so that everybody in the company can get their budgets and their funding and, and all the way down to petty cash. People can use a system, even sometimes a shared petty cash thing. And you know that just it occurred to me that like this test net when it gets to main it all that you'll be able to do that and all of the disbursements of all of the funds there's no need to have an accounting system for it because accounting at that point is a report because you're following all of the approval processes for your operations and everything 100% is recorded, everything on your internal blockchain that runs on the computers that are around your your company. Like if it's Coca-Cola, it's just they've got quite a lot of computers to run their internal blockchain. And the, in, the company controls the currency that controls the stake and the notaries. So it's just a perfect solution. It's, I mean, I know that that's not our focus and I know that we're not going to even be, you know, working to get that into companies. But in the future, if a company has an old outdated accounting system and is doing things differently, they're just losing money. So a couple things about the launches that we've observed, which are pretty amazing as well. So on testnet now on, on the testnet that we're testing and that we're going to make public soon <clears throat> and really the only you know it's it's just been to where at least it seemed like we have a release uh more than once now so it's you know i don't want i don't want to say soon or imminent or any of that it's just going to happen and uh, and everything is working. It's just that there are these little things that keep needing to be addressed before we're letting out because Asher's doing a fantastic job coordinating lots of testing and different people are, you know, trying, like, using it to do different things. And um, so it will be uh, when it will be, but it will be. And... Uh, and when you launch a currency, 5,000 Varus goes into the B pool right away, or um, 5,100, because the price for launching a PBAS chain is 10,000, and that's half of it because it's not refundable. And the price for launching a currency is 200 and that's half of it. That goes into the fee pool and, you know, the that immediately raises the price of the reward. No matter, like if we're at 12, then the first next reward is seven, uh, 62. This is one one hundredth. 
of 5,000 or it's a little bit more. And then it just slowly tapers off for a long time. So when someone does a chain launch, everybody in crypto is probably going to want to know about mining on Verus when all of a sudden the rewards go that high just because the chain is launching. And they're probably going to want to know why is that happening? And naturally, they're going to want to learn about the chain launch. And not only that, when the chain launches, aside from the notaries, which do take a share, most of the other half, and the notaries use that to notarize, most of the other half is going to be coming out as actually um, Varus test. It's almost all of the other half. Is going to be coming out as Varus test on the other chain, starting with the first blocks because it's going right into the other chain's fee pool or Varus or Varus test. And it's paying out in its currency because the, the large fee goes into a non fractional currency, which is the native currency of the chain. And <clears throat> so you can do pre conversions, you can offer a way for people to buy into the native currency of the chain. At the beginning, you know, you can do that. But whether you do it or not, that everyone who mines Varus is almost certainly going to want to mine a chain launch, merge mine that chain launch. Because, you know, that's like 50 more Varus per block, and it will have a little lower difficulty at first. On testnet, difficulty is going to be much too low at the beginning of a chain launch, so it'll go really fast and they'll catch up. Um, but on mainnet and or on the next, a later version of testnet, the chains will start more calibrated to where the network is at the time, because you know when it when a chain when somebody launches a chain, everybody's going to want to know, hey, what's going on? Why all of a sudden there's so much more money coming out of the block rewards? You know, and they're going to have time to go over and get some of that, and they're going to learn about that. And then they're going to want to merge mine it. And when they merge mine it, it's going to be more coming out on that chain. And so it's just this beautiful platform, even though it costs something because we don't want to have so many launches, we might end up having too many launches. Um, and I don't think we should really raise the price over 10,000 because I, I honestly think that, you know, I think the risk is that Varus ends up too expensive and it ends up just too expensive for anybody to reasonably do it. And so, and, and, and we do not, like we do expect to drop the price. But the reason that we want this price at a reasonable price is we don't want people making chains frivolously. We really don't, especially in the first release of this protocol. Um, you can do it on testnet. Uh, we, you know, you can get enough coins, but I think the default amount of testnet coins is probably not gonna be enough to launch a chain. Cause if you're gonna wanna launch a chain, you're probably going to want to learn a little bit more and you're probably going to, probably going to want to just ask some people. Um, but you know, if you're, if your chain fails to launch because you set some minimums on the launch bridge or on the chain, which both must launch for the chain to launch, um, then all the rest of the fee goes into the Varus chain again. So um, one way or another, the fees are non-refundable and they end up going into the chain just because the whole process of a launch does actually use you know, resources on the chain and the miners and the stakers and your notaries on a chain, they're the ones who really help you make it all happen. And everything ends up decentralized and it just, I will stop trying to explain how amazing it is to see or all the different things that can be done with it because there are just so many. And, uh, you know, and one thing to note, this whole concept of voting, if anyone's ever read the vision paper and, and PBAS in the vision paper and using it for voting chains, it's, it's like every technology that was laid out in the vision paper 
when this release gets to mainnet is actually finished and much more. Um, we don't have AIs on the chain yet, but that'll that'll come. Uh, the reason is that if you launch a PBAS chain, you do not have to launch a bridge converter with it. So you do not have to make it so that <clears throat> people can convert to your new currency. You also don't have to have block rewards. So people don't have to be able to earn your currency with mining because actually the fees on Varus make enough of a block reward on your chain that I'm sure a lot of people are going to be interested in mining it without trouble. The notaries can notarize using Varus on your chain. They don't need your currency. And so voting on your chain to be completely dependent on who has currency and you can determine who gets the currency. So this can actually be used. And since you can launch any number of PBAS chains, once it's fractal, it could handle every election in the world probably simultaneously. There's not a scale limit. So um, I'll stop. I'm really excited about it. It is like everyone can try it out maybe today. I don't know because it's – it's really that it, that's where it is. Um, I don't know because we're not going to release it until we don't find any other issues that would stop us from releasing it. But I think that right now, um, understanding that, and then there are a couple other things I just want to mention. So the bridge, the ETH bridge is coming along. Um, people are working on that. Uh, the guy who is kind of leading that effort the developer who's leading that effort is he wants to lay low so that he can really focus on the development for now. There are people in the community who are helping and, and I'm helping. Um, and you know, that's looking, it's looking good. There's progress. I don't know exactly when that's going to come online. Um, but when it does, we had this idea, a really funny idea for a kind of a marketing thing, because it's just the things like, I really want to answer questions. I want to get to questions. But the things that we can do with this platform are there's just there's just too many. And you know, it's part of the challenge of testing everything is just that it's composed. It's like the all the different pieces are independently like a blockchain and currencies and DeFi and baskets and conversions. And, blo and other blockchains and launches and Kickstarter-like launches and IDs and pre-allocations and time locking for IDs that can do vesting schedules for pre-allocations. Everything composes to make this insanely powerful platform that really will handle company supply chains and that will handle, you know, why would a company need DocuSign when they can issue all their IDs and do all their own signatures? and verify all their own signatures and all companies that work with them can as well. Why would they even need that? You know, it's just, it's just, there's too much that it can do. And so I, I do want to get to questions, but on this bridge idea, so we have this, if anyone's familiar with Monty Python, um, I'm going to just, you know, for the people who are bear with me for a minute, you know, there's this kind of really funny classic, you know, appreciate cult appreciated scene with the bridge keeper in Monty Python and, and the different people trying to pass and the bridge keeper ask questions about, you know, um, anything. And, and, and the questions are really easy sometimes. And so people who don't really know much about anything just pass. And then other people come and he asks really difficult questions and they don't answer them right. And then they fly off into the abyss, you know? And, and so, um, the the guy who's leading up the development on the bridge he's he's british and he just and he and he's really funny and he and he does um uh, some nice monty python uh voiceover type things and he's volunteered to write because we're affectionately calling the eth bridge alan and alan is the name of the bridge keeper in monty python and that's the code name is alan and so we thought that it would be really cool, you know, once we get the bridge coming online to have like a video 
with a meme and you know alan the bridge keeper asking questions like what kind of blockchain is it that will do you know that can that you can launch a chain and do blah 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 and it's like uh i don't know if oh, oh you know and then they go fly off into the abyss and you know and and so just some comedy little skit video thing it just seems like it'd be funny um so that's coming to another thing is that we have uh, a new member of the community who's still new but has been working on the um you know even though we've got the mobile wallet that has the z support now and does id lookups uh until we get the the back end of the mobile wallet connected to the banking system that you know consilience and, and value are doing with the 145 banks or countries 145 countries where you can connect it to your fiat banking system um we're not going to release it on the uh app and play store because the foundation isn't a company but at that point value is planning to release a value Veris branded wallet that will allow you to connect it to your bank and um and it will allow you, it's going to be a little bit different probably than everybody would expect. And I want to maybe set expectations on this. But there is a guy right now working on that. And I don't have, uh, he just started not that long ago, but there was most of that work on the back end. Uh, the, uh, a bunch of that work actually is done. So he's finishing up some of the screens. I don't know exactly where he is. We don't have a, a status report on that, um, but I wouldn't expect it to take too long. I don't have a status report on that. Um, and so that work is also in progress. And uh, once that's released, so the way that I expect that to work, and um, I don't know if Nick is online here. He might, yeah, I see he is. So he could confirm or I think we're, I think we're in agreement on this as a, a model that works for value and also would be great for Varus people in the community. So thank you, uh, Nick and value for all of your, you know, support and, and contribution to the Varus community on behalf of everyone else, even though you guys are also part of the Varus community. Um, and, and, uh, the model I think is that you'll be able to convert, from fiat currencies in and out of, I believe that the current plan is DAI, and you'll be able to send that around, you know, using the normal wallet capabilities. Um, and the reason, and we're not going to do, uh, in the first release, I believe, we're probably not going to do convert in and out of Varus, but there's a really good reason for that. It's because, you know, so yes, value is a company, archetype value. and and yes, um, you know, they could invest to do that. But the point is, there's really no need. Because as soon as Varus, what's on testnet, you know, gets to mainnet, you'll be able to send from any currency to Varus. And you'll be able to send from Varus to any currency, and you'll be able to send from DAI to Varus, and from, you know, die to E through Varus. And so you really won't need any other exchanges, market making, conversor, converters. You just won't need it. And, uh, and so I just, you know, first release is going to be really great that it's going to be going in and out of your bank account and in and out of die. Um, and, you know, if, if Varus, uh, what's on testnet isn't on mainnet by the time that's available and you might say oh it only goes into die why are, why do we have this well that's why because it really doesn't matter because as soon as mainnet hits you won't need it anymore you just won't need those things um so that's all i'm going to say without questions and i think now would be good i just open it up for uh for questions and try to do my best to answer if people have them.
Um, I have uh, some comments, but uh, I, I think I'm gonna go uh, last. Let uh, you other guys come in. Well, okay. If no one's gonna go, I will ask my question. Um, how does the V? I think it's called VDXF work. I'm interested in how that works. Yeah. So Jesse, I'm I'm gonna explain how it basically works, but I think you said you already looked at the code and we're not like, we're not going to be able to go into depth on VDXF because that's something that it is in the code. You can see it in the code and it's, but, and I'll explain what it does, but we're not going to be able to focus on that until we get this. Um, until we have developers who really want to actually make something with it. And they're, if that's you, okay, we could talk, probably offline because I'm thinking that that's going to be a level of discussion that's not going to be for everybody. Um, or when we are close enough to mainnet with all the other pieces, you know, that we don't, that we have time to go into that. Because the fact is that VDXF is something that we're already using. It's very valuable whether we try to get other people to use it or not. And that isn't the priority right now. And so we're not trying to sell anything. We're actually just using stuff. And we would like people to understand it, but we can't really take our time to go and put a bunch of energy into getting people to understand it as much as we want to let people know about it. And if they can get into it and figure it out, then there it might, you know, light bulb might go up. So I'm going to go through what it, what, how it works. So basically every ID is a lot more than just an ID. It's the root of a namespace and you know you get to define other ids in your namespace if you make a blockchain um but you also get the ability to define uh vdxf types and vdxf names and it's somewhat of an abstract concept but it's basically like an unlimited url naming system effectively so you get to define vdxf names and you get to define what they mean and you get to publish them in friendly name formats and you get to define them as links and you get to put them in your in your IDs and people can use URLs to indirect through your IDs to content that could be your entire profile or your company's profile or an entire corporate, you know, set of websites. It there's really not a limit to how much you could indirect through the VDXF, but the, basic model is that every um, ID gets a namespace within which they can define uh, publishable names and data types that everyone can recognize that that's what it is and use it and parse it. And the VDXF has a serialization model for binary that allows anyone to store that anywhere and also to recognize whether or not they should understand the data. And if they don't know how to understand the data, they even have the option of skipping it. And I'm not really going to go into more detail than that because I don't think it's what most people want to know about. And it isn't a priority for the community right now to educate people on that. It, if we end up spending too much... Okay, so then we should... When we have time, we can help you do it. Or if you could explain what it is you're trying to do, then you know maybe we could... Um, help you because we definitely would want to do that, but we can't really invest a lot of time that would otherwise go to just getting things out on mainnet to that. But absolutely, um, if you're trying to develop and let's just connect so I can understand more what you're trying to do, because it'd be a lot easier than trying to give you a, an overview of everything because it's just too broad what it's able to do. So, all right. Other questions? I think some uh, some are posting in the uh, marketing channel. <laughs> uh, how many transactions can the ETH bridge handle? Is a question. Well, there's not. I think the question is probably going to be how many transactions per second, because we don't know yet. 
but it's not real. There's not really a limit. Uh, there's no specific limit on the number of transactions that it can handle. Uh, and they can get queued up and then they just kind of come out. So it's like a, it's like a queue that doesn't really have a limit in size except the blockchain. And it's really just how fast do they come over? Um, okay. Can you explain how using the bridge works from ETH into Varus, for example, how much does the sender need to, ah, yeah, actually that's, so, you know, already on testnet, now the ETH bridge isn't live on testnet yet, but when this testnet is available already, um, you can send through a currency to another chain or to another system. What it means is you can send from, say, we have a chain that we call currency tests, and I can I can send from currency tests to Veris test through bridge.currency test, which will handle conversions along the way. Now, I can also send from Veris test directly into bridge.currency tests on the currency test chain, which doesn't make any stops at any converters on the Veris test side. It goes directly into the converter on the currency tests side. And what that means, even though what that means is I can go from Veris test into currency test and back with one transaction if i make it right we didn't make that easy in the thing i think but if i make the transaction correctly um i can go from veris test to currency tests bridge.currency test i can convert to a currency that is in bridge.currency tests and remember it can have more than just Veris and currency test currencies. It can have, I, it could have other currencies in it too. And I can bounce right back. And so you can do the same thing. You'll be able to do the same thing on uh, Ethereum. So from Ethereum, you will be able, now this is going to be, it's going to have to be coded into the contract. So I'm guessing, I don't know if the first, I'm guessing the first uh, ETH bridge on testnet won't be able to do this, but, it, but it's just a matter of making the transaction correctly. Um, you will be able to go from Ethereum into the Ethereum contract. And then as far as a user is concerned, you just went into the contract and it came back out to Ethereum, if you want. And uh, when you do, it actually will go over to the Varus chain, run through the uh, bridge.veth currency and come back. And uh, and it'll charge you less and you'll get a fair price. Um, but once you know that you can do that, you're probably going to want to know what how'd that work and why does it take a little extra time? And is there any way to do it much faster? And then you'll find out that if you were just leaving your currencies over on Paris, they're actually going to be a lot more secure because you're going to have revocability and recoverability and you're also going to be able to time lock your IDs and, you know, you're also going to be able to uh, hold all of your currencies on that. And when you do a transfer over there, it's going to take about, you know, three blocks or three minutes or so. Um, in all cases, e Julio, so that's the answer to that, I guess. So, uh, e Juliano, before I get to, uh, okay. E Juliano, can you buy the bridge dot currency tests? currency itself or just its reserve no it's a it's a currency yeah you can buy it and when and when it's used for um converting fees or converting currencies or anything then you know there's a certain amount of that conversion half of the conversion fees go into the currency as yield for that currency so if you got a bridge currency that's used all the time it has a yield. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, the price is calculated like uh, 
Well, he uses the same kind of formulas as Bancor or Balancer or um, it's a little more sophisticated than Uniswap, but it's basically the same as Bancor, but it's also more sophisticated in the sense that it does simultaneous solutions of all of the uh, conversions going in all directions on one currency in a single block. Can I ask a question real quick? Um, have you have you thought about uh, or the process or development of a Bitcoin bridge? Oh yeah, I mean, so he here's the thing about a Bitcoin bridge. I I know that people think we need to be doing all these different things, but I think a lot of times when people think we need to be focused on Binance and you know we won't need Binance, we won't need Coinbase, we won't need them. We just won't need them. They just won't be important at all. I mean, yeah, maybe I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm looking a little too far in the future because they're going to obviously be important in crypto. But um, you know, and when and now when you talk about a Bitcoin bridge, there's a problem with a Bitcoin bridge, and the problem is that Bitcoin is a very very low function blockchain. It really is. You know, it is not able to hold and release currency in a decentralized manner it only is able to respect signatures that are inherently centralized and even their multi-sig doesn't have that many signatures you know that you can have on a multi-sig and so the problem with bitcoin is just that yeah it's got to be a centralized bridge you know it's got to be and then you could say, well, what, but what about uh, Ren VM? And you know, we we reached out to Ren VM, and honestly, Ren VM was just like too busy with their ICO and making money to to talk to us when we were reaching out to them. And since we looked at it, at you know, um, I couldn't reach the developer basically. And and at this point now, when we look at Ren VM. Bitcoin doesn't have a signature model that allows you to do it mathematically in a decentralized manner. And I wonder if that, I, I don't want to say anything negative against, you know, RenVM, but unless they've invented some, if, unless they've broken cryptography and invented some new cryptographic protocol, you know, it's obfuscation that protects people. So then you got wrapped BTC, which also looks, um, Pretty big you got wrapped btc and and wrapped btc is like uh you know it's it's big it's solid i think it's solid it is semi-centralized in a way where you could say you know that we can believe that that's going to be okay so we could conceivably i mean i i i'm sure that we're going to have people sending wrapped btc over but, you know, I'm going to wait for either like Rootstock guys or Ren BTC themselves to come around themselves because I'm not going to try to pursue them. And if somebody, uh, I just don't, I, I think they've got it backwards and, and it's okay. And, uh, and it's not because I'm trying to be arrogant. I'm not in any way. I just, we have only certain places where we can spend our energy and if they don't understand yet, then they just have, we just have to wait till they understand. And we don't know for sure that Ren, like we didn't have the ability to vet their system and believe that it's even, you know, as safe as we would want it to be, as secure as we would want it to be for us to put any energy into that bridge. And so RAP BTC, you know, you could conceive, like they could, they could release RAP BTC, but um, knowing what they have to do wrapped BTC in order to get it onto our onto our blockchain rather than just sending it over from ETH, we'll be able to send wrapped BTC over the ETH bridge. The wrapped BTC group could also issue uh, wrapped BTC directly on Verus. They could do that, you know, because they can make a centralized currency. And I'm sure that um, 
I'm assuming, I hope we have WBTC. I'm assuming that the foundation bought WBTC. Please, if we didn't do it, don't anybody go squat on it right now. Um, let me just check really fast. But, uh, but basically, WBTC. Yeah, so um, it looks like it's probably uh, set. And so, you know, if they wanted to come and get the WBTC ID and issue wrapped to BD, because it's so easy to do. They just mint their currencies and burn it. Um, they can do that. And that's really kind of the same. So when there is a truly decentralized bridge to Bitcoin or when anyone wants to make a centralized bridge directly to Bitcoin or when Ren VM, you know, comes and and does it themselves or shows us that we really should be excited about it. Um, then there will be a bridge to Bitcoin. But until then, you'll be able to send wrap BTC, which is one for one Bitcoin over from Ethereum. And uh, and so I don't think we're really missing any functionality. Um, it's just, you know, that Bitcoin doesn't really have the technology on their blockchain to do a truly decentralized bridge and everybody kind of knows it. When they get Schnorr signatures, I believe that they will be able to do that. Uh, and I believe that um, at that time, my guess is that RenVM might make their source code public and everybody can see that that might be how they'll do it. Hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, uh, uh, Agar Gawker was saying, yeah, I, I'm not sure what you're saying. Yeah, you want to talk about videos, but if it's, okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, hey, what's up, guys? Um, anyone wanting to call me, you can just call me Aga. I just wanted to, uh, to say that I've been uh, following the project for a few weeks now. Find it very interesting, and uh, I have a background in uh, business development, and um, I also do uh, videography and uh, photography on the side. And I saw like uh, some of the some of that part of the project kind of needs some work, and uh, I just wanted to offer my help there. And I can pretty much go anywhere in the world to uh, create content, and I figured that maybe when launch was getting closer, getting some really good video materials about, you know, the use cases and who are the adopters we want and and so forth could be really nice. And uh, I'd be willing to, like I said, go where it basically is uh, around the world to do that kind of content. I, I'd be really excited to get some great videos. Um, you know, I think we'd probably need to understand what you're, what you mean. And I think Rozo has been kind of coordinating most of the, um, broader, like explainer videos, you know, the, the animated explainers and those. And, uh, I know that we have some people in the community who also are, um, like I know one person who I don't want to out is like an Emmy award winning uh, video producer. And so we, I think that we would love to have your help. And I think definitely you should coordinate and talk to Rozo. Um, and I'm, yeah, you're on uh, Rozo. So um, does that make sense that you, that you guys should, and I can help in any way they can. And then we have on the, and I, and I don't, you know, I think it would also depend on there's, it's, there is no company really. And then just so you know, it's really just a, like you could just make a video or you could coordinate with different people who want to do it. And I'd be happy to help. And I'm guessing that Rosa would be happy to help and, you know, and, and, uh, and, and we can do it together. And I'm sure that the, for something like some good videos, the foundation can 
step up and help, you know, with some bounties. We, but, but I think we don't, we don't usually commit to that kind of thing. The foundation doesn't usually, it's not, no, there's not toes. I don't think it's about stepping on toes because I think that every, like people make videos, different people make videos and we support different people in the community. The community supports different people making videos. And so I think, you know, um, it's just, it's a decentralized process. So if usually if people are really worried about getting their toes stepped on, um, then that's probably, they're probably not focused on just getting stuff done as much. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. We don't like, we don't like to attack other projects. Um, we can, I, I thought that the, uh, yeah. Uh, this is gonna turn into a uh, to a novel if I start typing. I, I think I get the general idea. I'll I'll come back with a more uh, uh, succinct uh, thing that I that I want to do. But it it's nice to hear that things are just open, and I just need to uh, um, like um, tag the, tag the right people. So uh, I, I I get the idea. Yeah, and. Um... Uh, I know you. I know you've been looking at my uh, videos. If uh, you have any feedback, please supply it because there's always room for improvement. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be making a list and checking it twice. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I also wrote a little post about it. It's uh, it's really cool to be uh, in any way part of this uh, community. I'm just. Uh, looking for a for a way to help this uh, get off the ground so uh it's coming up on midnight and i'll uh, check out and uh, just uh, take people in this okay thanks and sleep well Okay, so do we have any other questions? Do people want to? Do we want to talk about different? Yeah, sure. Hey, Mike. Uh, thank you for giving me the chance. Uh, it's really an honor to ask you a question over the voice chat. Uh, my question no, is: um, Sorry, I missed uh, the beginning of this your conversation. It was when I joined. You were talking, and it was really nice to hear all the things uh, you've been explaining. I, I just wanted to ask, uh, did you, uh, like, uh, you know, Commodore Hard Fork is coming soon with the Notary Note Season 5. Uh, are we expecting a new Veras daemon with the new keys in them? I haven't had any official communication about dates or last time I know it was like I found out kind of after the fact. So is anyone going to tell me about that or do I need to go and like, what's uh, the date? Uh, okay, uh, I was talking to Oink and he said uh, it might be uh, ready before then. Okay, uh, the hard fork date is June 20, uh, 14th, I believe. We don't have the keys yet. I mean, I would definitely, as soon as we have the keys finalized, I would definitely let you know. Because I remember last time yeah, we yeah, had... Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to make any promises about dates for mainnet, but I sure, I sure hope that, that we are able to, uh, I mean, I know that we can get the Komodo notaries in. I'm sure we could do that. Um, yeah, I don't see that as a problem. I just, just it, it is important. It's very important to have the earliest possible notice because if we end up, you know, what if we end up having to delay a little bit? Is it going to be a problem? Uh, we can. there hello oh sorry did, did you not hear me sorry uh no i didn't, I didn't hear. okay a uh, couple of weeks ago uh i reached out to oink to let him know about this but if you want to delay it, definitely we can talk i will speak no to, i'm not uh, saying we do i just don't want to put the whole community through multiple forks oh no no, no of course not of course not um that, that wasn't my intention 
because what I would want to do June 14th, if that's the Komodo's hardcore, you know, then and basically uh, what I'd want us to be able to do is have the main, our main net release, you know, up and out before then with enough time. So that means like by, I would think we wouldn't want it to be later than like, you know, June 1st. Oh, in out. that case, it's all good. Uh, in that case, you can no, just do it. You misunderstand. You really misunderstand me because I'm not saying that we can easily do that. I'm saying I'm trying to work back from the date you're giving me. I'm saying I don't know that we can do that. I don't know. I mean, look, it's been really hard to predict dates, and we don't. I'd rather have everything right, and I'd rather like make some. Um, you know, it isn't our priority, so I'd rather make some. Uh, some kind of, I mean, I'm not saying we don't have a priority of wanting to do that. I'm saying I'd rather make some kind of um, adjustment if necessary than rush any release out so that we can get the Komodo hard fork in on the Komodo hard fork schedule because it's not our schedule. You know what I mean? No, obviously. Uh and, and and so and so what it would mean it seems if we're going to be able to do the hard fork is what I'm saying working back, I would think we would have to get a main net release out by June before June first, and if somehow we weren't able to do that, which I I would I hope we can, but if somehow we weren't able to do that, then um, then we would have a need for a delay. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Does that make sense? Jocelyn, did I lose you? Uh, I understood. So I hope we can. Um, we will work towards doing that. It would mean we. It is not a target date because we can't. We can't do target dates. This was, you know, this whole like. I'm really glad that people aren't going to be dancing when they're really old, you know, celebrating the Varus release of Testnet and all that. I'm really glad about that. But, <laughs> and it's funny sometimes, but I, uh, you know, obviously we can't do specific dates like a company might. And because our, our priority is just getting it right for the community. We just want to get it right for the community. Like the community is the, is what matters. And so, we can't really go to the exchanges and say, you've got to upgrade now. And then you've got to upgrade in a week. And we don't want to delay the, you know, we don't want to delay the, um, Paris PBAS release. So it kind of all means that the only thing that we would want to move. And I'm asking, is it possible if necessary would be the possibility of moving the Komodo notaries out a little bit? Is that possible? Uh, no, Komodo Notary Node, I mean, the new keys will be activated on June 14th, as far as I know. Uh, but still, officially, I am not 100% sure what uh, is the date in Komodo team's mind, like CH333. So as far as I know, uh, based on the public documentation available or public information available, uh, I see it's June 14th. Right. So I'll talk to CA333 if we need to. and. Um, if not, then I won't worry about it. Uh, sure, no problem. I, I just wanted to uh, give a like. Uh, I wanted to check uh, first. I did with Oink, really, and then I really today I saw because... uh, the meetings. I thought, like, uh, let me ask. No, I really appreciate it. It's just that I didn't. You know, I'm not following everything. I haven't been. I've been just trying to get everything done, and so. Um... <laughs> the irony is, I, I even didn't want to bother you uh, with this information. <laughs> No, this Before. is critical. I mean, we, we, you know, this is, we want things to be smooth on the network always, and they're going to be somehow. So what we need, I mean, we just need to make sure they will be. So um, whatever is the Komodo notary situation, if they can delay, then and we need to, then we will. If they can't delay and we need to, then we'll make another arrangement and it'll be okay. Uh 
If you have to delay, it's not a big issue. I will try to work out on that or do something about it. So don't worry about this part as I did last year. So I believe something like that can be arranged. But if oh, we yeah. can get everybody to uh, like update at the same time, that will be like the uh, painless thing or the simplest process. If we can get you, you have You have my word that I'm working as fast as we can on trying to get this together and out the only thing i'm that i i see that it's it looks doable it really looks doable it really does but i see that you know if there was some kind of a delay that i just want to understand the worst case scenario and so we just need to make sure that we're adapted for whatever that might be uh, no problem. Don't worry. If you need to delay a tiny bit or something, uh, I'm sure we can arrange something like we did last year. So this shouldn't be a big and issue. Hopefully, and hopefully we won't need to. And so, okay, perfect then. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Really appreciate all that you do for helping out, and and you do help keep us connected, Shosin. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. If we don't have other questions, then uh, I'll just uh, listen and, and go work on other stuff. About I do have a question about Komodo, if you don't mind, just about the asset chains, since they're all independent. Does that mean they each ind individually have to bridge over, or do they somehow get to share the same bridging and they just implement it on their chain? Or do you not know? Or does my question not make sense? Uh, well... So there's so there is no Komodo bridge yet. Um, understood, understood. I just was curious um, if that were the case. When there is a Komodo bridge, it would be possible for Komodo to make a bridge that could work on all asset chains that decide to turn on the bridge. Um, But it would be an independent bridge for each independent chain. Cool. That's understood. Thank you for answering that. Sure. Um, as far as liquidity pools in Atomic Dex, you know, Atomic Dex has a, a like a an exchange order book model, and liquidity pools are just a different model. And usually, the way that these things work when you blend them together is you arbitrage so basically you just uh i mean somebody i think that anybody could take any atomic dex market and make a corresponding liquidity pool and just you know raise and lower with bots the just do arbitrage between atomic dex and the liquidity pool and just kind of make money between those two things and they'll both it effectively would um combine the total of liquidity on both to each other <coughs> that would be the way that i think those things can be combined So any other questions about the overall, like the release, the platform, anything? Um, if 
you can or you cannot think, do a certain thing. Is there anything you think we should know about, like in terms of um, uh, some functionality that we should be looking at or thinking about with the test net? Here's the, the problem I have when we, so here's, as I said, it's composable, right? So the problem I have with that kind of a question is that this, this system is more like it's more open-ended and capable than any of the use cases that I even I can think of. Like all of the use cases that we described in the vision paper, you can do all of the use cases you can, you can do them. Um, you can do, you know, a launch like the value company is, is planning to do where the uh, blockchain is licensed to, you know, exclusively to license a patent portfolio by having a certain currency burn. And uh, you can launch it and, you know, take a pre allocation and maybe a carve out for in exchange for the patent portfolio. You know, they're like, you can launch a Kickstarter and do it as a currency and just use the, you know, the funds to uh, exchange for the product as a payment system. Um, I mean, there's just, my biggest problem is actually, I don't know what people don't understand because I've been living in it so long. But, um, it's really, you know, people talked about in the past, uh, I know Jessica was here talking about um, augmented bonding curves and it's, you can do vesting schedules. You can do, you know, various emission schedules of currencies. There are ways to launch a blockchain along with a bridge currency that creates like the, never, I'm sorry. There's never been something that I have known about that can do what this can do. And after making it and seeing like all after we, I've made this together and, and seeing all the things that you can do with it. I think we're going to be figuring out like the, the smartest people who want to just figure it out and do their, their own applications or their own businesses are going to be, you know, big winners in the future. Other than anyone in the community saying, this is the thing you should do, or this is the, it's going to be the people who come to this and say, Oh my God, now I can do this thing. Like, um, uh, I, I don't want to go into all the details, but, there's, there's an ability, you know, like if you've got a centralized currency, you can mint and you can mint and you can, uh, you know, when you mint, it's a price neutral operation right now because it changes the reserve ratio and you mint currency. Even if you have a reserve currency, you mint and it's price neutral, you know, uh, um, with, uh, one of the recent changes that was part of the cleanup it will be easy later to do like we'll probably do it in this release for centralized currencies to do uh an option where you can mint change price so it means if you mint you dilute the currency directly and every holder of the currency has a little bit lower value in their currency and then you'd say well why would you ever want to do something like that you know and it turns out, just thinking about it, I know that I've, I've talked to some other people about it. And I basically, you can, I'm not going to go through all the math of what it allows you to do, but because you can do that, you could set up loan systems on the blockchain that would allow people to choose between risk and yield to provide liquidity for loans that could use the value systems of privacy, you know, value archetype system of privacy, self-sovereign identity, and being able to actually expose that as value, you know, so that you could just say, I qualify for this tier of loan. It means I get this interest rate and the world can loan you money and you can borrow. I, I'm not saying that we're going to have that system but that is actually doable. Like you can do that kind of thing. It's just, so I'm sorry. The answer is I can't answer that because there are too many things and, and I keep thinking. No, no, that answers I, the question. That's good. 
that totally answers the question. That's exactly okay. what it is. That's amazing. So we're going to try and see all the things we can do. There's, uh, is there, like making our own currency is going to be using a specific command, define currency command or something like that. And that can be used to do all the different types of things you were talking about. Is that right? Yeah, the um, mint change price is not going to be available on this test net. Um, but it's actually so easy to get in that I would assume, and I can't, it's not a promise. I would assume it's going to be in before release. Um, with that, there'd be a way to construct applications that could do loan pools, I believe. I believe you don't need more than that. Um, there would be some centralization in the first implementation of something like that. Because there aren't all the, like at some point, I believe, you know, we're going to blend all of the self-sovereign data and the ability to aggregate different things and, and AI systems. And, you know, I can imagine um, actually having hashes of AI models, of machine learning models that are used to give you answers to questions that were trained on the data, you know, with public algorithms that people can verify and everybody just agrees on a trained algorithm and then they could actually do answers and, and have consensus based, even, you know, AI answers. I'm not, I, I know I'm, this is just going way too far. It's actually not that far ahead with what we've got, but it's, it's certainly not what people are trying to grapple with and get their head around right now. So I probably should not be saying that stuff right now. Um, so I'll, any other questions about things you can or cannot do or how you might do a particular thing? How about oracles getting off-chain data on-chain? Well, so that's actually really easy because it's kind of a notarization thing. Because if you're going to have oracles, then you're going to have, you know, some either identities or set of identities that agree with that data. So off-chain, so every Oracle, I would say in Ethereum that can have provable data should be available once the Ethereum bridge is live. I guess every Oracle would be available, but it'd be a little bit delayed just by the bridge, you know. Um, if you wanted to have, uh, because you can prove anything on the on the Ethereum blockchain, and you're probably going to have about a 20 minute delay, and then you can prove anything behind that. And so, if you can prove it, it from the Ethereum blockchain, if it's read information or you have to pay for it, then you probably would have to pay for it. But on the Verus blockchain, there's this thing that that we use for notarizations for confirming them that actually allows identities to um, confirm or reject information and it's kind of the basis for um, a lot of different things that will be possible and you know an easy note or is it an easy uh, oracle model would be like a data feed that you could just have you know some number of um of uh identities would need to sign saying that that is in fact accurately and then it could be trusted you know, these kinds of things are actually not going to be hard at all. I, I don't really see a big need for a kind of Oracle right now that we don't have. Um, because I think with that, you can pretty much make any kind of Oracle people do today. But I explain what people can do from the east side via the bridge. Well, they can basically, like, I mean, what they will be able to do when that goes live is they'll be able to send to um, Varus or the ETH bridge on Varus and back. And we will be able to agree on, like, we'll be able to publish. Right now, we're only going to publish the bridges. But you will be able to send to another currency on Varus that could do a conversion for you. Um, how that's exposed, like you will be able to do it exactly how that ends up 
getting exposed to the ETH bridge, um, I don't know, because it's something that you're going to be able to do in PBAS. And, and the only real question is there, there is just, um, you just don't want a lot of fragmentation. So probably you're going to either be able to go in and out of a published converter. So in, convert, back out to Ethereum. Or you'll be able to go into any converter and stay on the Varus chain. But you might not be able in the first release to go into Varus, into any converter and back out that isn't published on the Ethereum side. And publishing is going to be something that the bridge is going to have to do because it's going to be a, um, it'll take space in the notarizations. So you will at least be able to send in and out from the ETH side to the DAI ETH Varus converter without ever having to think that you're going over to Varus. You will be able to send in and out to any published um, fractional currency. And we might make it so that in the first release, uh, if you want to go to any of the other uh, fractional currencies in Varus, that you don't bounce back, so you leave your currency in Varus, but you still would be able to send to them. Does that make sense? So generally speaking, the model will be you send currencies over or you send currencies for conversion. And if you send currencies for conversion, then right now we know that you'll be able to send them to the ETH Varus converter. Um, and it will be possible to publish other converters. And it will, but maybe not in the first release, be possible to get all converters on Varus to be able to just be in and out from Ethereum. Our Smith, I think that question was answered before. No, it's okay. I mean, basically it relates to the Bitcoin blockchain itself and, you know, it's a centralized, it, it only allows releasing of funds. I don't want to actually go through it again, it, uh, but the bottom line is just that uh, the Bitcoin blockchain itself doesn't really have a bridging solution itself and we're not going to solve that for it we don't believe that it's necessarily something that's too important for us to solve and uh and you'll be able to send wbtc or if you want you'll be able to send ren btc over from ethereum um but uh we're not gonna you know people will bridge bitcoin um Someone can bridge it, but without a decentralized technology to bridge. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, I mean, uh, I I know only a little about the Cardano ID. Basically, I, I am sorry for I'm sorry Ethiopia is deciding to go that way for them, uh, but I I don't want to. Basically, I don't know. Uh, it's not a self. It's not the same as a truly self sovereign ID that provides the privacy that we provide, and that's what I think people need. That's what I think. People need so um, uh, you know. Good for Cardano. Um, maybe Ethiopia will decide that they want a better idea at some point, and they can they can easily spin up fast chains for their country that will scale and provide IDs for everybody. So. Uh, we just don't have to, we don't have time to focus on them right now. So, you know, things happen, and and there will be the right time for us to spend time with them. But, you know, that's and and people will come back around. I mean, everybody, uh, you know, couldn't buy Linux until it was available, or couldn't use Linux until it was available, and then when it was, people really used it. All right, so if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to get back to seeing if that is today. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate it. And uh, I hope everybody jumps on TestNet when it's available and, and tries things out and gives some feedback. Thanks. Take care. Thank you, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yes. Hey, Chris, you also here? Hey.